well so so long we were discussing ideal solutions and deviations from ideality and we found out that that we have introduced a term gamma and we have tried to express gamma in terms of the excess properties of the solutions the excess properties arising due to the deviations from ideality right the excess properties are the properties of the solution due since it is deviating from ideality and assuming that these excess properties are referred to as the properties of the real solution minus the properties of the had it this had the solution been ideal at the conditions of temp same temperature same pressure and same composition right now what about the ideal dilute solutions if you remember we had discussed that if we take up say suppose pressure versus x1 plot for an ideal solution i had told you that the plot will be something of this sort this is the partial pressure p1 versus x1 right for most of the cases as we had mentioned the plot is something of this fine so therefore we find that when the component is in excess then the uh, the slope is almost linear and the intercept is p1 saturated we found that at x1 equals to 0 also the slope is more or less linear but if we extend it then it the intercept here is not at p1 saturated it is at some other point and therefore we we said that for both the cases it is linear or in other case we found we proposed that or we found out that for ideal solution your f i bar is proportional to x i ok and in the same way we can say that for ideal dilute solutions also f i bar is proportional to x i what is the difference suppose in this case we take the proportionality constant as k i so in this particular case your k i or in maybe say r i or something that is equal to the fugacity of the pure component at this conditions of temperature and pressure of the solution right and for low to moderate pressure this becomes equals to p i saturated for ideal dilute solution in this particular case r i it is not equal to f i what is it it is equal to rather this is equal to h 2 1 which is the henry's constant of component 2 in component 1 we had already discussed these things so that r i this is equal to limit x i tends to 0 f i bar by x i is equals to h 2 1 and limit x i tends to 1 f i bar by x i which is equals to f i. Now, suppose there is just as if when there is deviation from ideal solution then in that case what do we write? We write f i bar equals to gamma i x i f i. Similarly, for deviations from non sorry from ideal dilute solutions what should we put up we should have and some sort of an identical uh, activity coefficient and this identical activity coefficient should incorporate the no, uh, the deviations from an ideal dilute solution so in this particular case we should have f i bar equals to say gamma i star x i h 2 1 agreed now we should remember that when we have an I ideal solution then in that case for x i of every component tending to 1 f i reduces to or f i bar reduces to the saturated vapor pressure of that component for low to moderate pressure or the pure component fugacity of that component at the same temperature and pressure of the solution. What I mean to say is when we are talking about an ideal solution then in that case for each and every case for each and every component we can write gamma i tends to 1 as x i tends to 1 this is true for all components is not it. But when we are dealing with an ideal dilute solution then in that case definitely when it is uh, when it is dilute with respect to one component other component is in much excess. So, suppose it is a binary component then for this solvent plot we have gamma i tends to 1 as x i tends to 1 
and for the solute part what do we have gamma i star maybe it is it is a binary mixture. So, this is gamma 1 x 1 and gamma 2 star tends to 1 as x 2 tends to 0. So, what do we find? We find that while the normalization of activity coefficient is symmetric, it is same for all the components for the case of ideal solution. In this particular case, the normalization of gamma is unsymmetric. While we find that the solvent, if it obeys the Raoult's law, the solute it obeys the Henry's law. And therefore, while for an ideal solution, this is known as symmetric normalization of activity coefficients. In this particular case, we call it as unsymmetric normalization of activity coefficients. Right. And so, therefore, again I would repeat that symmetric normalization it tells you that gamma i tends to 1 as x i tends to 1 and unsymmetric normalization, because in this particular case the normalization for the different components are different. So, therefore, this is gamma 1 tends rather gamma 2 tends to 1 as x 2 tends to 0, gamma 1 tends to 1 as x 1 tends to 1. Right, And in the similar way therefore, sorry th this should be gamma 2 star and therefore, we have two types of gamma normalization one for ideal solution one for ideal dilute solution. And what is the relationship between gamma 2 and gamma 2 star of any particular component? We know gamma 2 is F 2 by x 2 F 2. We know gamma 2 star this is equals to F t by x 2 h 2 1. Now, what is gamma 2 by gamma 2 star? This is equals to h 2 1 by f 2. So, therefore, this limit x 2 tends to 0 gamma 2 star equals to 1 right and therefore, limit again limit x 2 tends to 0 gamma 2 this is equal to h 2 1 by f 2 this is equals to gamma 2 by gamma 2 star or in other words gamma 2 star by gamma 2 equals to f 2 by h 2 1 equals to limit x 2 tends to 1 gamma 2 star is not it. So, therefore, what do we find? We find that limit x 2 tends to 0 gamma 2 this is equal to this and limit x 2 tends to 1 gamma 2 star this is equals to f 2 by h 2 1 equals to gamma 2 star by gamma 2 and this we need to remember that limit x 2 tends to 1 gamma 2 star which is given by this this is a hypothetical situation because x 2 tends to 1 for that particular case the component 2 does not exist in the phase of the solution as a result of which this is a hypothetical state. So, therefore, when there is deviation from ideal dilute solution in that particular case, we can also make the correction considering some form of an activity coefficient just to differentiate it from the activity coefficient we have been using for deviation from ideal solution we we have named it as omega uh, sorry gamma 2 star you can use any other name if you wish for such cases we have unsymmetric normalization of activity coefficients and if we want to find out gamma 2 star from gamma 2 we can use either of these equations where this particular equation is hypothetical since we know that gamma 2 star or other 2 does not remain in the phase of the solution at the conditions of temperature pressure of the solution. And in the same way like we have tried to relate the activity coefficient gamma 2 or gamma in terms of Gibbs free energy and the partial molar volume and the partial molar enthalpy, we can do a similar endeavor and relate gamma 2 star with the partial molar 
excess Gibbs free energy considering it to be the difference or the excess property to be the difference between the actual property minus the property at infinite dilution for the same temperature and pressure of the composition. So, by this we have covered ideal solutions, ideal dilute solutions as well as deviations from ideal solution, deviations from ideal dilute solution. Next the thing which is left is so far we have been discussing everything assuming that the two components are completely miscible over the entire range of composition. But there are situations where we find that the two components are not miscible over the entire range of comp composition. They can either be completely immiscible over the entire range which is again an extreme state or there can be partial immiscibility which is much more real situation where we find that for very low and very high concentrations the, the, the two components are totally miscible and within the intermediate composition there is the two components are immiscible. Such systems are known as partially miscible systems. So, therefore, we are going to deal with situations as partially immiscible systems, completely immiscible systems and why do substances prefer to prefer not to mix, when do substances prefer to mix. You already know that for constant temperature and pressure conditions, this is governed by Gibbs free energy. So, definitely the two components would like to separate out when the Gibbs free energy of the two particular liquids separated is less as compared to the Gibbs free energy of the solution. So, therefore, we are going to deal with those conditions when two, two particular substances or two particular components form a an immiscible pair when do they form a miscible pair and the phase diagrams the PXY, TXY diagrams for completely immiscible and partially miscible substances. And since no discussion on thermodynamics can end without having or without discussing the thermodynamic consistency of VLE data, we will be spending a short amount of time by discussing how exactly the Gibbs 2 m equation is used to test thermodynamic consistency of VLE data. With that more or less the class or the course on thermodynamics will be coming to an end. So, we will be discussing these things in the next class. Thank you very much.